Okay, so in this video, we will determine whether the series converges or diverges using the limit comparison test. So, we are summing the terms n plus ln of n over the square root of n cubed plus 4. So this is our original sequence, a n. And as always, to obtain the new sequence b n, the simpler sequence b n, we simply have to ask roughly how large is a n when n is very large. So, we have on top two terms that blow up to infinity when n goes to infinity, n and ln of n, but we have a power function versus a logarithmic function. We know that power functions are way bigger than logarithmic functions, so our dominant term on the numerator is n over well, on the denominator, if you look inside the square root, n cubed is way bigger than 4, so 4 is insignificant, so you're left with essentially the square root of n cubed. We can simplify a little bit. So we have n over the square root of n cubed. Think of the square root as a power of 1 half. So here you double exponentiate n. You have n cubed to the 1 half, so you can multiply the exponents, so it's n to the 3 half, but n is simply n to the 1, so I can keep my n on, my, on the denominator and do 3 half minus 1, which is of course 1 half. And this is another new sequence bn, much simpler than the original sequence we're summing now, we're saying, sorry, when n is large, a n, which is rather unpleasant looking, is just roughly 1 over n to the 1 half. And so when we sum these terms, we will get a simple p-series. So this looks pretty good. Before we go any further, we have to verify the two conditions of the limit comparison test. So the first one is obvious. When n goes from 1 to infinity, these terms are positive these terms are positive, so clearly, once again, a n and b n are strictly positive. And all we have to show now is that our intuition is correct, that indeed, when n is large, a n is roughly b n. And we check this, of course, by considering the limit, as n goes to infinity, of a n over b n. And as long as the limit returns a positive integer, or I should say a positive number, it doesn't have to be an integer, then we're okay. So a n And now, I am dividing by bn, and here's something that I will not do. I will not use the simplified form of bn. I will instead use the initial form. And why? Because ultimately, I want to knock off the two main terms. So the n and the square root of n cubed. So if I keep bn, not in its simplified form, but it in its original form, this will make the limit easier to handle. So, if I divide by bn, well, I'm dividing by a fraction, that is, of course, multiplying by the reciprocal, so times the square root of n cubed over n. And I want to pair up this n with this n, and this square root of n cubed with this square root of n cubed. Well, if you think here we are dividing n plus ln of n, the whole thing, by n. Well, it's the same as multiplying this by 1 over n. And here we are multiplying the fraction by root of n cubed, that's the same as dividing by 1 over root of n cubed. 
if you can go back and check, if you do 1 over 1 over root of n cubed, that's just times root of n cubed. And now we can multiply out and we'll have, hopefully, a simple enough limit. So n times 1 over n is 1, ln over n times 1 over n, ln over n over n, over, and now we can combine the two square roots, we have the root of something over the root of something, so a quotient of square roots is the square root of the quotient. So this is the root of n cubed over n cubed, that is simply 1 plus 4 over n cubed. Now let's see. As n goes to infinity, this clearly shrinks to zero, as it is a constant over something which goes to infinity. This term is slightly less obvious, but not very difficult. As n goes to infinity, ln of n goes to infinity, n goes to infinity. But we have a simple logarithmic function over a power function. We know from our discussion of hierarchy of functions that power functions are way bigger when n is large than logarithmic functions. So this will also shrink to zero. If you're not fully comfortable with this, take this limit aside. So look at the limit of ln of n over n as n goes to infinity. You have an infinity over infinity case. With one application of L'Hopital's rule, you will arrive at this shrinking to zero. So in the end we have 1 over the root of 1, which is simply 1 over 1, which is 1, and so our limit is a positive real number. So we're good to go. Again, looking at the intuition, we're saying when n is very large, a n over b n is very close to 1, and so when n is large, a n is roughly b n. So we can sum up the terms if a n is roughly b n when n is large, then the sum of a n will be roughly the sum of b n. And now of course we'll replace b n by its simplified form. And b n simplified, if you recall, was simply 1 over n to the 1 half. Again, this is now a simple p-series, where p equals 1 half. The key point is, this is less than or equal to 1. And recall that a p-series only converges if p is strictly larger than 1. So this p-series diverges. So we have divergence. But when you have a sum of positive terms that diverges, it can only do so by blowing up to infinity. So the initial, the initial series is approximately infinite, therefore it is infinite as well. So because the new series diverges, the initial series diverges as well by the limit comparison test. And that is our conclusion, that the initial series diverges by the limit comparison test. And that's it.